اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى ليوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم من ذي أولياء الله عينون بعون الله وكون عونا لنا بالله عصا نحظى بفضل الله من السلطان الله سيد شاء الله الفائز دغستاني سيد شيخ محمد نازم عادل الحقاني سيد شيخ محمد عادل الرباني اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد عطروا مجالسكم بالصلاة على الحبيب Make your gatherings fragrant by what? By salawat upon the beloved صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Now we, we get people get together for, for this or that Mostly entertainment, enjoyment, food, games and you rarely hear somebody say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when, when his salawat is mentioned in a gathering it reaches all the way to the first heaven the fragrance from that salawat and there are specific angels they, their duty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created them for one reason and one purpose only is to search for places of dhikrullah where, where Allah's mention is, is, uh, is happening. These angels, once they find a place, then they call each other. You have found what you're looking for. Come and make, come to, why they come? Why the angels coming to zikr? The angels' life is zikr. The angels, they don't eat and drink like we do. Their life is their lifeline is zikrullah, but they come what they come to witness that these servants of Allah subhanahu wa taala have gathered for the pleasure. And after witnessing what happens, after after seeing this, they will report because Allah in the hadith is saying to them, "What is what are my servants doing in this gathering? What is their purpose of getting together?" So. Even though it is uh, on our part, it's not really much effort to attend zikr. I mean, you take an hour of your day or an hour of your week in this instance, or an hour and a half, and you go and sit in air-conditioned place and uh, even have some nice Turkish tea. And on top of that, uh, maybe get some food at the end of it. Nice. Even then, you find our resistance. You find you find the majalis of dhikr compared to the majalis of dunya, a small handful of people. You don't find uh, uh, like uh, when they have concerts, ten thousand, fifty thousand, or sports venues. You find a handful of people coming to remember Allah. Well, alhamdulillah, glad tidings for for those who are remembering Allah because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has chosen those he hand not handpicked but he he basically those are like uh, in today's term as if you have won uh, a lottery of millions of people because out of if you count out of many out of the millions in in, in Canada how many people tonight are sitting doing zikrullah hundreds a thousand 5,000, 10,000, I don't think more than that, Allah knows, but so uh, these people have been honored and chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather and to mention his name. It is a huge ni'mah to say la ilaha illallah, it is a huge ni'mah to say Allah, Allah, la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, only the reality of this ni'mah will manifest in akhirah. In Akhirah, people will see the reality of La ilaha illallah, will witness it. They will witness the reality of Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. Sayyidina Ibrahim, when he met Prophet Sallallahu in Isra'a Mi'raj in the seventh heaven, he says, Aqri ummataka minni salam. He said, give salam to your ummah. We say, ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala Nabiyyina salam. Alayhi wa alaykum salam. 
He said, when you tell you tell your ummah that the heavens soil is fertile and it is flat and it is ready to be planted, وغراسها, the planting of it is subhanallah alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Allahu akbar. So you are literally planting your own heaven with heavenly plants, not dunya plants. Everything, every description of heaven is for our there's really nothing you can compare heaven to. There's nothing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us what's closest to our understanding when he talks about heaven. But in heavens, your dhikr here will manifest, will have a, will have a physical appearance. La ilaha illallah that you say here will fill al-mizan, tamla'u al-mizan. Means your scale when Allah is way, inshallah, we, we're never taken to account. We're never taken to Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We're never audited, inshallah. Ya Rabbi. That is the easiest way. But if if one is audited, one la ilaha illallah fills the scale against all your sins. So, Holy Quran will come to testify for you or against you. The month of Ramadan will come to testify against you or for you. Your own deeds in the grave will manifest and appear as a either a beautiful man or a very ugly, scary man that, that becomes your companion. For men and for women, it's ladies. So here, what, what Sayyidina Imam Mulan Jalal Din Rumi said, he said, take care, train your dogs in dunya. Train your dog in dunya. Don't leave it untrained, because in the in the grave, it will become a lion. So if it's not trained and it's a lion looking at you, what's going to happen to you? Meaning, train your nafs, your ego. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. One person, one time. was walking in the neighborhood and there this dog comes out and barks at everybody and if uh, if you come close he'll even bite so the neighbors got together and went to this man's house outside and said yeah come outside you're terrorizing the whole neighborhood with your dog do something about your dog we can't, our kids can't pass, we can't pass in front of it, it's biting and uh, chasing everybody. The man from inside, he says, I can't come outside, it will bite me too. <laughs> That's the reality of our nafs. If untrained, it's harmful to ourselves and it's harmful to others. That's why taskiyah to nafs. This is the whole point of Tasawuf, or it's just another name for purification of the self, is to get ourselves ready before the time come where we will meet our Lord, to become uh, full of the prophetic manners, not the animalistic manners, not the satanic manners, but the prophetic manners, manners of kindness, of mercy, of uh, selflessness, of generosity, all these beautiful manners that you have to, they, most people, most of us, like everything else, we need to work on them. That's why Prophet ﷺ called this the greater jihad. You're not, as some people uh, naively think, that oh, I'm just a good person. Yes, but you're a human being. You have an nafs, a marab su. You have shaitan. You have your own de designated shaitan whispering to you. You have hawa. You have vain desire. Your two attachments, your your habits, all these things. You have all these things, all these enemies. This four. You have your love. Love of wealth, love of dunya. They're not, you're not going to overcome them just organically like this. There is a method. 
That's why prophets were sent to teach us how to become real human beings, to teach us how to become like angels, not like animals. That is tariqa, a way, a path. It is the path to become a mu'min, not to stay just, I say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and I pray and do everything, alhamdulillah, but you, yani your heart is attached to dunya. Uh, we have, we may have diseases of the heart, just like you have diseases of the body, you have diseases of the heart. Disease of the heart, you can't take an aspirin for them. You can't, if you have enviness in your heart, filling your heart, you can't take aspirin. You can't take antibiotics. What do you do? If you have um, greed, if you have arrogance, what do you do? How do you get rid of these, these diseases? You, you have a choice. You can say, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. And I'm just going to live my life. Yes, you can. You take your chances. Most probably, if untreated, disease, most diseases get worse. They don't get better. But Islam came to treat humanity. Quran is for purification and treatment of humanity. Dhikr, Salah al Nabi, uh, learning the prophetic manners and trying to follow, all these things are for our eternal life so that we, inshallah, reach the shore of safety with Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and all those who sacrificed everything. If you see the life, lives, lives of Sahaba and what they, what they showed us of selflessness, how they, how they conquered their own nafs, how they went from fighting over nothing to becoming stars for humanity, how they gave everything, all their wealth sometimes. They, they for, for Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, how many, how many slaves, how many slaves he freed in Mecca? People that had no relations to him in the early days of Islam. Sayyidina Bilal, many from his own wealth. Why? Because they were seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. May Allah make us understand, inshallah, grant us to, to learn and to understand and to be from those who, inshallah, reach the shore of safety and reach Allah's pleasure before the before we leave dunya, inshallah, may we reach that. ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة